Right. We're going to go on with the last talk of the day. Um, our next talk is going to be from Ben Martin, and he's going to be doing a, a talk about from vulnerable to viable, enhancing your WordPress security posture. A round of applause. Thank you. So thank you for coming to my, uh, my presentation. Uh, can everyone hear me OK? Awesome. Uh, so um, my presentation is called uh, From Vulnerable to Viable, Enhancing Your WordPress Security Posture. Um, before I get too much into this, I just want to um, give uh, big ups to the organizers of this event. Uh, this has been a really awesome WordCamp. Um, I've really enjoyed myself, and I, I think everything was really well executed, and I'm just like really happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> so um, that being said, uh, my name is Ben Martin. Uh, I hail from Victoria, British Columbia, and I have been working with WordPress security and WordPress malware for almost 10 years. Um, this December is actually my 10-year anniversary working at Sukuri. Uh, I'm a um, senior uh, incident response rem remediation analyst. I also do some research. I contribute to the blog, and I've contributed to multiple uh, annual threat reports that we do. <clears throat> and I would like to take uh, the next 45 minutes or so to share with you um, some things that I've learned over the years that I've been at Sukuri to try to help you improve your security posture and um, help essentially keep the hackers at bay. And um, I hope that you leave uh, WordCamp and leave my presentation uh, feeling better equipped to deal with online threats than when you entered. That is my goal. So um, that being said, what we're going to be looking at is uh, we're going to start at the beginning, of course, uh, looking at what exactly is WordPress malware. Um, we are going to discuss why security is important in the first place. Um, we're going to look at some of the most common <clears throat> um, types of malware and security threats that we deal with on a daily basis uh, when we're dealing with compromised WordPress environments. Um, we are going to take some time to explore default configurations in WordPress and why they can be very problematic. And uh, to bring it all home, we're going to go into some defense in depth, and I am going to do my best to ensure that you you, uh, leave this presentation with some um, actionable uh, things that you can actually do with your WordPress site at, once you get home uh, to make it more secure and give you kind of a, a, maybe a little to-do list to keep the hackers at bay. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, as I said, let's start at the beginning and let's define exactly what we're talking about when we say security. What is WordPress malware? What does it do? What is it for? Um, so. Essentially, uh, most of you probably know, but just to bring everybody up to speed, malware is malicious software. It is software designed to intentionally cause harm, um, or in some cases, uh, maybe redirect people to a tech support scam or steal their credit card information from the checkout page of an e-commerce uh, store. Um, there is a whole rainbow of awful malware out there, uh, and we deal with it you know, every day. Um, um, you know, five days a week at, at work cleaning up compromised environments. Um, <clears throat> so often is the question asked, uh, you know, Ben, why did, these, why did the hackers attack me? I just have a cat blog that gets like 200 views a month. I just post pictures of cats, for Christ's sake. Like, why would they, why would they hack me? Why would they be interested in my site? And, um, you know, the thing is that, that hackers don't care about the content of the website. They care that it's their resources that they can use to their own ends, right? Uh, so when they see, like, oh, this site only gets 200 views per month, hey, well, that's 200 potential victims for me, right? That's 200 potential redirects to a tech support scam that I'm going to get. That's, you know, 200 uh, potential pockets I can pick, right? They don't care about the content. Um, <clears throat> so that being said, um, common types of malware are, you know, spam, of course, 
uh, malicious redirects to sketchy or malicious sites, drive-by downloads to, with the intention of, of infecting a, an endpoint device with a you know Trojan, for example, uh, credit card scamming, uh, there, there's and, and phishing are all very very common threats that we deal with, um, and these are the sorts of things that attackers. Um, y y misuse the resources of your website for. So it doesn't matter how big your website is. Um, it, it doesn't matter, you know, how many views. It doesn't matter what the content is. Um, and also, you know, the media always gives the the portrayal of a hacker as, as a guy wearing a balaclava in a basement somewhere, like trying to hack you and your family and do evil deeds. Um, but these attacks are all just automated. They're opportunistic. They're not targeting you. They're rarely targeting anybody. Uh, they will just exploit whatever vulnerability they can to get their hands on whatever resources they can to spread their malware and, you know, phishing, redirects, whatever they want to do. So that brings us to our next topic, is let's ask and maybe let's explore why security is important. <clears throat> Obviously, nobody wants to deal with malware. It's a nuisance. But let's maybe explore a little bit more why it really matters. Um, so I think I want to start this section off by stating that um, as website owners, um, it's our responsibility to be good stewards to help keep the web a safe place to be for everyone. And. <clears throat> Um, you know, as more and more of our lives are conducted online, more of our, our commerce and our shopping is done online, um, it, be, it, it becomes the responsibility of the website owners to help facilitate a safe environment for people to exist in and to be good stewards of keeping the online communities safe uh, to, to, to be. And even if it's, you know, just going into your WP admin area and getting your plugins updated, you know, every week, um, keeping the web a safe place to be and maintaining that safety is the responsibility of every single person in this room. And I think that's something that we need to re reflect on and, and keep in mind as we go about our, you know, daily business with our, with our websites. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's also uh, important to mention that uh, website owners, for the most part, do not consider security a priority until they get hacked and then it becomes the most important thing in the world you know google's blacklisted my site my website is belching out malware nobody's visiting my site anymore the sky is falling oh my god what do i do i deal with situations like this pretty much every single day at work um and you know, I'm not trying to tut tut website owners here. Like, I totally get it. Um, why would you want to worry about security? You want to you want to post your cat videos. You want to post your recipes, right? That's why we make websites in the first place. Uh, or maybe we have a small, small business and we want to sell our wares online. We have websites because we want to make websites, or because we need to. Um, we don't make websites because we want to deal with hackers. That's the last thing anybody wants to do. So why would they think of it? Like when they're getting it set up, right? Um, it, it makes sense. I'm not blaming anyone. Um, but the only thing that's more difficult than having to worry about a whole bunch of security stuff when you're setting up your website is not doing it and then having to deal with the fallout after the fact. Um, website malware can be <coughs> expensive, time-consuming, labor-intensive to get rid of, and annoying to say the very least. So um, I think it's very important for website owners to consider security a, a priority from from day one, and that's going to make your life a lot easier down the road, uh, and it's going to help you know maintain that that trust that people have in existing in the web and surfing the web and you know buying you know your 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 uh, company's products on your e-commerce website or whatever. Um, <clears throat> So with that being said, um, I would like to go over uh, some of the very, some of the common um, malware campaigns that we've been dealing with and observing for uh, multiple years, just so we can actually kind of get our eyes on exactly what does this malware look like, what are their goals, what are they doing, you know, I mentioned that they are opportunistically 
hacking all their websites, all these websites, but what do they actually do with it when that happens? Like, what's their modus operandi? What, what makes them tick? What are their objectives? So um, I'm going to go into uh, three main ones. Obviously, there are a lot more than this, but these are some of the three um, most common and uh, oftentimes most detrimental types of malware campaigns uh, that we at Sucuri kind of keep track of. Um, so uh, the three I'm going to go over are Balada Injector, Sokulish, and Credit Card Skimmers. Um, so essentially, uh, these types of malware are used to um, allow the attackers to make a profit. Uh, because at the end of the day, their goal is to make money. Uh, it is quite literally their job to hack websites and to figure out ways to hack websites and make a financial return on it. For the most part, attackers aren't really doing this for fun. Uh, it's it's a business. Um, I read recently. Um, it's it's fascinating uh, in the in the black market where the, a lot of these um, you know ransomware groups operate or cyber criminal groups operate. Um, it mirrors the real economy. Like they have HR departments. They have uh, employee of the month awards. Like they have paid vacation. Like it's it's. It's, it's just a business to them. Like they don't they don't care. Uh, it's like it's like their career, um, because. <clears throat> Pardon me. They're they're operating in a space where they can act with legal impunity, essentially, and so these are just means to an end for them. Like they're not, you know, nefarious uh, people doing evil things for, for evil reasons. Like they're they're they are threat actors. They do cause harm and they do evil things, but it's just to make money. You know, just like anybody else is doing, essentially. Um, so let's start with the Balada injector. Um, this is named because um, of the the directory in which it dumps its malware on your desktop what if you fall for the scam. So essentially, you have this um, malicious, obfuscated JavaScript right here. Uh, and what it does is it injects code like this into uh, your database or your files. Uh, and the usually what happens is it redirects you to a page that has a friendly looking robot and sometimes an upstanding looking fellow wearing a suit. And it asks you to click to allow that, that to verify that you are a human. Um, <clears throat> of course, most people, if they have good browsing habits, are going to be like, yo, what is this? I'm not clicking on this. But oftentimes, people do. And uh, what they don't realize is that they are infecting their, they're essentially if infecting their computer with spyware. Um, <clears throat> we have um, been tracking this malware for, um, you know, roughly five years. And at this point, we estimate that this cam ongoing campaign has infected over a million websites. And um, it's a, basically associated with bogus redirects, uh, rogue ad networks, adware, uh, pot <clears throat> potentially unwanted programs, nothing that you really want on your computer. Uh, these <clears throat> threat actors are very, very aggressive. Um, so essentially, whenever there's a new vulnerability in a plugin or theme that gets disclosed online, within 24 hours, these guys are exploiting it and hacking thousands of websites. Uh, they're, they're, they're really on the ball, so to speak. Um, for this reason, um, people that have automatic plugin and theme updates enabled on, in their WordPress environment are best suited to dealing with these types of threats, but I will get into that a little bit more later. Um, Next is Sokulish. Uh, Sokulish is a little bit more nefarious. It's not just annoying spam and spyware, um, but it, it tends to be the first stage in targeted ransomware attacks. So again, this is a campaign that's been going on for well, well over five years. They've infected many, many websites. It's one of the most common types of malware. And again, it's a JavaScript injection, typically. and. <coughs> What you'll see if you're a visitor to an infected website with this type of malware tends to be what you see here. Uh, it alerts you that you're using an old version of Chrome, and it gives you a handy dandy zip file that you can download and update your Chrome and make sure that you're using the most recent version. Now, of course, we all know that that's a lie, and what they're actually doing is a drive by download for a remote access Trojan. And once they have um, gained 
control over an endpoint device, usually a Windows box. Um, they detonate a ransomware and demand a ransom be paid in, uh, you know, in Bitcoin most of the time. Um, so this fake browser update malware is, is super common and the implications and the consequences of it can be quite devastating. Uh, as a website owner, it's more just a, a nuisance and it's a real kind of a, a pain to clean up uh, and remove the malware. But if you're a victim of the actual ransomware attack, that can be financially devastating to you. Uh, even more so if you happen to detonate one of these things uh, on your corporate network at work. Um, and so a lot of the ransomware attacks that, that have been popping up in the news over the last few years starts with this. And it, it begins when someone mistakenly at work uh, visits one of these infected sites and doesn't have good browsing habits and uh, ends up downloading a, a, a rat remote access Trojan on their machine. <laughs> So last, uh, our credit card scammers. Uh, this has been increasingly common on infected websites, uh, particularly WordPress over the last few years. Um, so a credit card skimmer is exactly what it sounds uh, when a, a an attacker is able to compromise a website. They take control of the checkout page or they meddle with the files in the back end so that when the a, a, a um, purchase is conducted on the website, um, they are surreptitiously picking people's pockets at the same time. <laughs> so um, this is usually called mage cart malware because it started roughly in the year 2015 when attackers started um, attacking uh, um, Magento CMS platform websites. Magento is a dedicated e-commerce platform, and so it was kind of a foregone conclusion that they would start with attacking that. Um, however, starting at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, give or take, we started noticing that the malware that was previously infecting Magento environments to steal credit card details was being repurposed to target WordPress, usually using WooCommerce, like literally copy and pasted the malware into a different, whoops, sorry, into a different environment. Um, and that trend has continued. Um, so this um, type of malware is not the most um, severe in terms of numbers because most websites are not e-commerce websites. However, uh, if you do own and operate an e-commerce website, uh, this is the last thing that you want to happen to you because you might find yourself uh, on the phone with Visa in very hot water being informed that your website was um, identified as a common point of purchase for multiple stolen credit cards. Like, bro, you're hacked. <laughs> you have to figure this out. And um, you can end up paying kind of thousands of dollars in fines. Um, and just to really hammer home how much the attackers are targeting WooCommerce environments is this graph on the, on the right-hand side here. Uh, this is a summary from our uh, 2022 threat report, which shows the most common uh, file paths and names of known credit card skimming malware. And you can see the top four are all WooCommerce. Um, you know, Magento doesn't even appear until number five, and it's just over 5% of the total. <coughs> So to further hammer this home is uh, the next graph that I made some time ago. Um, and this is an analysis of uh, sites with known credit card skimmers by our site check tool, which you can use at sitecheck.sakuri.net. And we can see that um, in the, basically the middle of 2021 is when WordPress overtook the other CMS platforms, dedicated e-commerce platforms like Magento and OpenCart. And then by the end of the year, it was eclipsing the rest of them. Um, credit card theft, uh, this will shock you, tends to happen the most during the holidays uh, when people are spending their money online and you know visiting a lot of e-commerce websites. In fact, um, at Sakuri, the summer is usually like the slow season because the attackers are on vacation, I assume, and then they like whip out their malware like in like September, October, and November just to get ready for the holidays. Um, <coughs> so uh, if you are an e-commerce, website owner, I would recommend that you uh, pay special attention to your, your security posture. Um, 
That being said, um, let us explore some default configurations in WordPress and why they are problematic. So, um, default configurations of software tends to be insecure in general. This is not anything that's unique to WordPress. Um, this is a problem across the board. So, for example, if you get a uh, new internet service provider, they're going to send you a router in the mail, and it comes with a default username and password, which they recommend that you change, because it's usually public knowledge what those credentials are, and you don't want any you know, intruders on your Wi-Fi network at home, right? Another one is for um, uh, like wireless network attached security cameras. A lot of the people that buy those from Costco or whatever, or Best Buy, um, they don't change the password on them, and then they end up getting infected and getting part of a botnet. So this is a problem with security or with software just in general. And WordPress is no exception to this. Um, <coughs> In general, um, one of the reasons why WordPress has had such a meteoric success over the last 20 years and why it has become the most popular and most widely used CMS uh, is because of its ease of use. It's convenient, it's easy, it's friendly, it's very user friendly. Um, and so why wouldn't you want to use it, right? But I, th I think it's very important to keep in mind that, and this is something I'd like to stress as being one of the, the core ideas of my presentation, is that there is a constant tug of war between convenience and security. And one of those often comes at the expense of the other. Um, again, that's not anything that's unique to WordPress. That's just a, a, a general truth, right? Um, <coughs> And one of those, uh, one of those things, those things that are convenient but perhaps insecure, is what you're looking at right now, the WordPress login screen, which I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. Um, if I go to some random WordPress website com slash wp dash login dot php, this is probably what I'm going to see. Why should I be able to see that? I shouldn't be able to see a, a authentication prompt for a website that I don't own. Um, so that's one of those things that makes it really easy to use, but also on the flip side, it makes the platform vulnerable to brute force attacks, right? Unless you take additional measures to mitigate that. And I do want to stress right here that all the points that I'm going to bring up, uh, all the shortfallings of default configurations can be fixed. They can be mitigated with security plugins and firewalls and other such measures that WordPress site owners can take. But the onus is on the site owner to do that themselves. It's not anything that's going to happen out of the box. It's not going to happen automatically. Um, and as I stated before, WordPress website owners or site owners in general don't tend to care about security until after they've get hacked. So it's not exactly something that they're going to think of when they're getting their site set up, right? Um, <clears throat> generally speaking, the access control measures on a default out-of-the-box WordPress website are quite poor. Uh, it's just the admin username and password. That's it. There is no limit on uh, authentication failures. Uh, there's like limit of login attempts. The admin URL is WP admin. It's the same on virtually all sites. Um, and like there's there's no two-factor authentication by default. Again, all things that can be fixed, but not there by default. Um, another thing that's quite insecure by default is that you have the ability to directly edit files from your WP admin dashboard. So if you're an attacker, what do you do? Well, if I'm able to compromise an admin panel in a WordPress website and I successfully brute force my way in, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the theme editor. <clears throat> theme editor. Then I'm going to go to WP content slash themes slash active theme slash 404.php and I'm going to edit that file and I'm going to put a backdoor at the very top of it. And that way, uh, if the website owner discovers he's been hacked and changes his passwords, well, I still got my foot in the door, right? Again, that's one of those there by default things that can be changed but um, needs to be changed. So, 
defense in depth. Uh, I would like, this is the part where I leave you feeling uh, inspired and capable to, to make your site more secure. So I'm going to give you some actionable steps that you can take uh, to, to, to fix these default configurations if they may be there in your environment and make things a little bit more secure. So defense in depth is the concept of making, uh, anticipating what your enemy is going to do and making their life as difficult and miserable as possible while they're trying to do it. So at every single step of the way that the attackers are going to try to compromise your environment, just make it really annoying for them. Make it time consuming for them or better yet, make it impossible for them to do it. Um, <clears throat> it's taking every measure that you can to secure your website. So uh, the very first one that I want to mention, of course, is two-factor authentication on your WP admin panel. If there is one thing that you remember from my talk today, it's that I want you to go home and enable 2FA on your WP admin panel. That is the best thing that you can do. Uh, and in fact, you can put 2FA on your bank login, on your Facebook account, on all of your social media accounts. Basically, anywhere and everywhere you can possibly enable 2FA, you should do it. Uh, because it's unlikely that the hacker is going to have access to your mobile device, right? Um, limiting the number of login attempts, rather failed login attempts, on your WP admin page is very effective. That's going to mitigate brute force attacks, right? Um, IP access control is one of my favorite, because like I said, why do I go to some random WordPress website.com slash WP login and there is an authentication prompt? I shouldn't be able to see that. Um, so if you restrict who can view that page only to your home IP, maybe your work, uh, maybe your friend's house, maybe the Starbucks down the street that you like to sip coffee and blog from, and everyone else should get a 403 forbidden. Um, that's very, uh, I think you can do that with an HG access file or some security plugins, or you can use uh, something like our security firewall to do that very easily. Um, also, the fact uh, that at, you know the, the login URL is the same across all websites is a little janky. Like maybe if you go to WP admin, it should return a 404 unless you know the secret you know login URL that you yourself has have um, <coughs> specified. There's also a plugin in the WordPress repository that can allow you to do that. Um, or even something really basic like a CAPTCHA or a secondary password. Um, this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. Obviously, you should be using strong, robust passwords everywhere uh, on WP admin, cPanel, hosting, FTP. If you have an SSH uh, service with your hosting provider, you should use a key authentication. Um, <clears throat> basically make it as difficult to, as possible for your your environment to be brute forced. Um, there are some additional security rules that you can add to wp-config.php, like disallow file edit, which removes the possibility of the attackers editing that you know backdoor into one of your theme files that I mentioned earlier, or disallow file mods, which is on the more extreme end of the spectrum, which basically locks down the environment entirely. Um, and you'll definitely want to use a, a security plugin. But don't install everything under the sun because you're going to lock yourself out of your own website. Um, all that being said, um, on the Sakuri blog, I do actually have a fairly detailed blog post that I released you know, some months ago that go into all this stuff in really granular detail. Um, I forgot to include it in my slides, but if you search up blog Sakuri Ben Martin WordPress hardening, then it'll probably be the first result. <clears throat> um, and to close up here, um, always keep your website patched. Uh, vulnerable, and by that I mean keep your plugins up to date, keep your WordPress core up to date, keep your themes up to date. Um, vulnerable software is the number one cause of infection, and uh, the best way that you can mitigate that is by enabling automatic updates. Because there's a very short window in time between when a vulnerability is released and it starts to get exploited, usually under 24 hours. And not all website owners are going to be available 24-7 all the time to issue these emergency patches, right? If you have auto updates enabled, the work is done for you. Um, 
there's a, um, many people don't like having that enabled because sometimes updates break things. That's a very valid concern. Uh, and so you'd want to pair that with uh, a daily backup service to make sure that you have something if, if something breaks. <coughs> um, file integrity monitoring is very important. Um, we have one uh, called the server side scanner that we offer with our services and it basically goes through your files once per day and tells you if any files were added or modified. It can, it's a exceedingly helpful and uh, diagnostic tool. Um, <clears throat> And I think it's important to um, just continue to stress the fact uh, of this constant battle between convenience and security. Not everyone is going to want to enable every single one of these security measures because it's going to make um, working with your site just nightmarishly inconvenient. Um, so I can understand why you wouldn't. So um, you need to decide as a website owner um, what level of inconvenience you want to deal with uh, for the sake of keeping your your website secure, um, and that's going to vary from website to website. You know, if you're if you if you got the cat blog, maybe you just want to put a captcha on your WP admin page and have a strong password and call it a day. And if you are a, you know operate a rather large e-commerce website, um, you might want to take some more additional measures. Um, I'm getting told that we need to start Q and A. So just one final uh, note: if you do have an e-commerce website, um, I would strongly recommend disabling guest checkout and putting a CAPTCHA on your checkout page. Otherwise, your site can be used to test stolen credit card numbers before they go in the black market. Um, and that's that. Thank you for coming to my talk. All right, let's have it. Give me some questions. Yeah, real quick question. Um, usually when I see hacked websites, I work on a lot of, you know, people come to me with distressed sites. Um, it's almost always just uh, code that's hacked. Um, and typically it's the, like, WordFence is an example. They look at the files, but what about the database? Are, do people, don't people add malware, you know, bury malware in the database as well? And do you scan, does security scan for it? Absolutely, yes. It's very common. Um, like with credit card skimmers, as I mentioned before, the database, um, I know this is a WordCamp, but with like Magento sites, for example, one of the most common ways is just throwing a JavaScript injection in there. Um, that um, Balada injector that I'd mentioned earlier, um, <clears throat> very frequently will just put thousands and thousands of like JavaScript entries in the database. Um, I haven't worked with WordFence enough to know what extent they check with the database. Um, but with Sakuri, when we do like perform a cleanup, we absolutely do scan the DB. And um, usually, if there's something nefarious in the database, it's going to display externally on the website somewhere. You know, um, that's kind of the whole point. And so our um, uh, external site check monitoring will typically flag that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it is a crucial uh, component. Uh, that, that sometimes gets overlooked, and it's very important to check it. Hello. Uh, so I basically have two questions. So one is uh, on the hardening WordPress slide, you told that you, I have to add CAPTCHA on the checkout. So if uh, my site already has Google reCAPTCHA enabled, do I need to add any, any additional CAPTCHA on the checkout? And another question is uh, for our website, for example, we use uh, a payment gateway called Paddle who process all the payment gateways in, on behalf of us. So we don't store any credit card details, they do it for us. So is there any risk of uh, credit card schemers in this case as well? Um, for the first option, um, the goal of putting a uh, CAPTCHA on your checkout page is to prevent um, automated card testing. So as long as at some point in the checkout process they they, they bump into a CAPTCHA that they can't do uh, automatically or sequentially, then your issue should be, then you should be safe from that. Um, <clears throat> because they have like tens of thousands of stolen credit card numbers, they write a script to just find a, a, a another site to test them on and they just do thousands and thousands and thousands at a time. Um, as long as you can break their automation, that's what counts. Um, <clears throat> what, what was the payment gateway that you said you were using? Uh, 
pendulum. So it's P A D D L E. So what they do is basically they provide the payment gateways like PayPal, credit card, Apple Pay. So we don't have to worry about. Uh, so we, we just integrate it within WooCommerce, and they process all the payments on behalf of us, and all the data basically stored in their database, not us. So they they store all the credit card data. So in that case, is there any issue of uh, data being stolen if someone coming from our website and buying? things yeah and it's a it's a WooCommerce environment as well yeah, yeah. so uh, what's interesting about some of these card skimmers is that um, you can you know you can design a, a perfect um, e-commerce plugin like WooCommerce or something that works really effective that handles payment information in a very secure fashion um, but the malware is not designed to do that the malware is designed to do the opposite and if you simultaneously have a malicious plugin Plugin installed in your WooCommerce environment that's designed to harvest those card details. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how secure your e-commerce plugin is; uh, the malware is just picking their pockets anyway. Um, so, I I don't know specifically. I've not worked with that specific payment gateway. Um, perhaps they've managed to kind of transcend that contradiction. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, the malware is designed to to harvest the data no matter how. It's handled in the legitimate fashion. Um, so, uh, you know, and I've I've seen credit card theft happen on um, uh, payment gateways and platforms that claim to be bulletproof. You know, the hackers, you know, if they have to go to the moon and back, they'll find a way to do it, right? Um, so I would certainly not consider anything to be bulletproof, and I would certainly, um, obviously, you'll want to use the most secure payment gateway that that you can find. But I I would not let your guard down. Like there. They're, these are like quite literally like organized crime groups that are like figuring out ways to exploit payment gateways and steal steal card details. Like they're fairly sophisticated threat actors, um, so I wouldn't put it past them. You know, definitely keep your security posture up. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, so what was the title of the blog post? Okay, so it's on the Sakuri blog, which is blog.sakuri.net. The title is, uh, I think, WordPress Hardening, and I'm the author. Uh, so just search up uh, blog, you know, Sakuri blog, Ben Martin, WordPress Harden. That should do the trick. Uh, or you can go to the, my, my author page, which is blog.sakuri.net slash author or authors, one of the two, uh, then Ben Martin. And all my, all my stuff will be there. Any other takers? Oh, there we go. Got another one. Um, one thing I always ran into was um, we would get uh, a random, randomly, we would get just a huge spike in our database connections. And we'd get up to something like, I think it was 256 was, was well, I think about 80 or so was about where our website started to really slow down. I was wondering what, um, if you had an idea about something that causes that. Um, I don't think it was someone trying to hack our site. Um, so I think it was probably something that was um, wrong in our code that would cause some kind of looping structure to happen or something like that. But I just wanted to get your, your take on, on something like that. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that often gets blamed on malware um, and totally could be. Um, but I've, in my experience, it's more often misbehaving code or um, you know, just like a plugin going haywire or making a bunch of like, like logging a bunch of stuff when it should be or um, you know just behaving in generally unexpected ways um, as far as like you know database connections I don't know maybe crypto miner mining cryptocurrency or something it's like maxing out the resources on the server could be related to that uh, that's the only thing that really comes to mind as far as like a, a malware standpoint um, <clears throat> but I would um, hesitate to blame things on uh, malware right away, you know, <clears throat> because quite often there's a, a more likely cause and uh, more often than not, 
if your like resources are being maxed out in your environment, <clears throat> it could just be a misconfiguration. You know, I, I wouldn't jump to conclusions necessarily, although I wouldn't also completely dismiss it. Hi. Hi. Um, so I use a security plugin, um, and there is a, you know, you can hide the login. So I've done that. But I've often wondered if hackers can just bypass that, or if they have a script to look for the login page. And so I, it was heartening to hear to do that, but I've often wondered, you know, if that works. Well, that's actually a great question. Um, it's one of those, like changing the, the admin URL is one of those security through obscurity things. Um, it's something that I wouldn't necessarily rely upon to, to you know, sleep soundly at night. Oh, the, I'm invincible from the hackers now that they'll never guess my login page. Like I've, I've outsmarted them, um, but it will help, right? It's not going to hurt your, your security of your website. Absolutely do it. Um, I would probably, <clears throat> it's, it's sort of like um, changing the port on an SSH connection for your VPS, right? Like the standard port is 22, but I'm going to change it to 129 they'll never guess but of course there are like tools that you can just do a port scan and it's like oh he's using port 129 like I've I've outsmarted him um, but it's one added step that they have to do so from a defense in depth strategy you're making the attackers life slightly more difficult and that is part of the goal right um, I wouldn't again um, I, I wouldn't completely rely on it um, but absolutely employ it employ whatever measures that you can take to make their lives difficult and and this, often I like to say that like attackers go for low-hanging fruit right as long as you're not one of the people at the bottom of the tree you're much safer you're much better off right uh, you don't want to be a low-hanging fruit you want to be one of the ones that where they have to reach up really high to get it so um, the attackers maybe if they get a 404 on WP login PHP they might be like oh it's not a WordPress site why bother or if they get get like a connection refused from port 22 when they try to brute force, you know, an SSH password, they might be like, ah, oh, it's, it's too much trouble. And they don't bother with it, right? Um, so I, you've definitely done a, a great job in like making your website more difficult to hack, but there are also other ways, other things that you could, can do uh, in addition to that, for sure. Like there's, there's no limit, really. Hi, is, is there a combination of like security plugin and firewall that you would recommend or are you obligated to recommend security products? <laughs> this will shock you, uh, but I would recommend using the Sakuri scanner plugin with the Sakuri firewall. But I do work for Sakuri, so you know, full disclosure there. Um, I'm, I'm half kidding. Um, you know, honestly, uh, WordFence is great. WordFence is an awesome plugin. It's really effective. Uh, we have tons of clients that use it. Um, you know, they have a great blog. They have a great vulnerability research team. Like, big ups to them, for real. Like, they're good. Um, I think um, as far as firewall goes, that's not really my, my expertise. Uh, I'm like more on the malware analysis and, and remediation side of things, so I'm not like, um, you know, super informed about that. But I know Cloudflare uh, allows you to like draft up your own rules sometimes. Um, <clears throat> I mean, there's a whole bunch of choices under the sun, right? Um, but... Uh, of course, I'm most familiar with Sakuri, and I'm obligated to recommend our own services. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I I will just give WordFence big ups here. Like they're good, they're they're solid. As far as I know, they're not going to conflict with any of ours either. So that's also good. Anybody else? All right. Well, we've just started to receive the, the first influx of uh, everyone else into the room. So cool. Well, thank you for your great questions. Uh, thank you for coming to my, to my talk. I, I appreciate the audience. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some of my experience from the last 10 years with you. And I, I hope, you, hope you leave this uh, WordCamp feeling uh, entertained and empowered and educated. So thanks again.